y a los compañeras y compañeros que se siguen sumando tanto por las redes comrades that are still joining us via Zoom or social media we told you that we already had comrades from Argentina, Pakistan, Turkey and Australia they've already spoken and now it will be the turn of Luis Mayer, our comrade from the ISO States. Next, it will be the turn of Farah Ibrahim from Lebanon, from Movement for Change in Lebanon. Luis, your turn. Hi, comrades. It's a great honor to be able to be in this conference with so many comrades from different parts of the world. This is a, an amazing moment. We are living through a, a deep change that is going to have consequences probably for several decades. We will see an increase in polarization, in radicalization, in the class struggle. And revolutionaries have to be ready for this new scenario, which is absolutely exciting for all of us who want to change the world. Of course, there are huge dangers ahead of us. But also, there are huge opportunities for revolutionaries around the world. So I think this conference is a big first step. There are hundreds of comrades, thousands of comrades participating here. And I think it's amazing that we can get together and start building a revolutionary alternative that is needed in this situation. Several comrades have spoken and mentioned the rebellion that is taking place in the United States. Uh, over the past three weeks, we have seen a massive rebellion unfolding against systemic racism, against police violence. This rebellion has very deep roots in the structure of U.S. capitalism. It is very important for comrades around the world to understand that U.S. capitalism was built upon the foundations of slavery. U.S. capitalism was built upon the economy of plantations. So racism has very deep roots. That's why we speak about systemic racism. It is deeply rooted in the economy and in the functioning of capitalism in the United States. It is capitalism that needed racism as, an, as a justification for why it is especially exploited a certain portion of the population. So that is why racism has survived through all these years, taking different forms from slavery to Jim Crow and now to the new Jim Crow. So these are the very deep roots that make the struggle against racism very connected with the struggle against capitalism. But if the rebellion has these deep roots, it is also, in order to understand it, we must also understand the immediate context in which it is taking place. Over the past three months, we have seen all the contradictions of US capitalism unfolding at an incredible speed. There are 40 million people who have lost their jobs in the United States over the past three months. This means that there, are, th there is a huge rise in poverty. And it means that there is thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people that have no access to health care, for example, in the middle of a pandemic. And the pandemic has hit specific, uh, with specific strength all of the, um, all of the uh, communities uh, of, of the oppressed communities, for example, the African American communities, the uh, the Latinx communities. So, to understand why this rebellion erupted, now we have to understand this. I mean, this is also a rebellion against the terrible mismanagement of the pandemic of Trump of the Trump administration and also of, of the Democrats, which are the other party of big capital here in the in, in states. So the pandemic exposed these inequalities. The pandemic exposed how Trump 
how the Trump administration functions. And also we must understand that over the past decade, there has been a process of radicalization which has had the youth as one of its main components. Ever since the 2008 crisis, there has been a process of radicalization that had very high points, for example, in Occupy, in the Occupy movement, in Black, Life, Black Lives Matter in 2014. So all of these elements explain the experiences of the past 10 years of the pandemic and these structural elements explain this rebellion. It has huge consequences. Trump tried, Trump and the Democrats tried to crush this rebellion with repression, but they have failed. The perspective of a crushing defeat of the rebellion through repression has completely uh, failed. They have had to retreat from that perspective and are, are, and are now trying through basically through the Democratic Party to co-opt to co the movement and to institutionalize it through elections. But the movement is growing and growing and growing. We have seen massive demonstrations. More than 750 cities have had demonstrations over the past weeks. So in three weeks, this country has been turned around and probably the world has been turned around. It's going to have very deep consequences. And it has a very, uh, and it has a very uh, deep impact in class struggle as a whole. It is proving once again that the struggle of the African-American communities, that the black struggle, that the struggle for black liberation is an integral part and is the vanguard of class struggle in general. And it is opening a new moment in class struggle. We have had over the past three weeks, more than 500 strikes and industrial workplace actions against racism. Yesterday, we had an, an amazing in Juneteenth, which is, which commemorates the, 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 the end of slavery. We had dock workers striking and paralyzing 29 docks, 29 ports in the West Coast. This was an amazing action. You probably have seen some of the images with Angela Davis there and everything. This new strike wave is led by black workers. So we have that the radicalization in class struggle. So what comes next? The deep economic crisis will mean that the government will try to impose the bourgeoisie and the government will try to impose huge, con huge cuts, huge budget cuts, huge austerity measures. Th th these have already started. But the, the, the fact that this is going to happen in the middle of the rebellion marks that we will see a new peak in class struggle coming now. So what is next is that here in the States and all over the world, Countries that had, that had for decades been relatively stable will be shaken very deeply. This is a huge change that we have to see that is coming. Governments need to impose these austerity measures, huge repression. But the possibility to go forward with this huge repression has been really hit hard by the democratic rebellion in the US, by the deeply rooted rebellion against police violence and against and against police oppression. So the police institution that has to, uh, that, that on which the governments rely on for a repressive way out of, of this crisis, the police institution is very much hit now by a wave of struggle that demands, for example, the police budget be radically reduced. So we will see, so what comes next? We will see further radicalization and much more struggle. And for this, we need more than ever to build a revolutionary party, to build a revolutionary regroupment and to organize revolutionaries around the country and the world. The reformists such as the DSA are not up to the moment. They are not uh, involved in the tasks of, that are needed in this moment. So we need more than ever to build a revolutionary current and to organize rev our revolutionary comrades around the world. And I hope that this conference is a big step in that direction. Thank you very much, comrades.